Paramount just wants to make more money. They don't want any more of this Drag Race Italia season one bull If you're looking for a global superstar, then why do they have to be English speaking? I'm just saying. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are doing something a little bit different. A few weeks ago, I put a poll on my community page asking you what kind of videos you'd like to see. And a few of you voted and said that you wanted to see some drag race tea and gossip. So I am here with you to discuss RuPaul's Drag Race Global All-Stars. That is right, Global All-Stars is coming. And I'm gonna give you all the behind the scenes tea, all the Reddit rumors, and break down the cast and let you know my thoughts on who's in, who's out, and what's going on. Remember y'all, this is just my opinion and for entertainment purposes only. I will not be giving away placements or anything like that because I want to enjoy the show. I wanna watch the show along with you and I might be doing like a fab or drab series on it when the time comes. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So Global All Stars was announced back in December of 2022, but actually filmed in October, November of 2023. The premise of the show is essentially queens from around the world coming together to compete on an All Stars season. Now, if that sounds familiar, that is because that is kind of the same premise as UK versus the world or Canada versus the world, but it is led to believe that UK versus the world and Canada versus the world were quite successful franchises for their respective countries. And so the US wanted to do their own version. There have also been some rumors going around that for the UK versus the world seasons, that some people didn't want to compete because there was no prize money. And for Canada versus the world, there were some people that didn't want to compete because RuPaul wasn't judging. But personally, I think this franchise is coming out specifically because Paramount just wants to make more money and why not bring a new all-star season? As well as all-stars has been having trouble with casting some queens. So this does bring more international queens into the spotlight. So they have a bigger pool of people to choose for a regular all-stars. Now, it is said that this is going to be the Olympics of drag, having queens from each country come in and represent their country and compete against each other. And it is said that this is going to be airing in uh, spring summer of 2024, right alongside the Olympics. So it could just be a one off series, but ultimately I think that the ratings will let us know if it is here to stay or if it is just a one and done. So with so many queens from all over the world, you're probably wondering where is this franchise even being filmed? And if you guessed the US, you'd be wrong because apparently they are actually filming in Colombia. Turns out that they have actually filmed several seasons of Drag Race, including Germany and Brazil in Colombia. It seems that World of Wonder has made a studio in Colombia with the workroom and everything so that they can just like push out drag race after drag race so they can keep the same production, they can keep the same staff, they can keep the same sequencing and make sure that the level is always up. They don't want any more of this drag race Italia season one bull they want to make sure that every drag race is at the same level. Now we've seen other shows do this in the past, such as Survivor, who now only films in Fiji. So this isn't a new concept and honestly is really intelligent. It is also said that each of the queens are going to get $20,000 to spend on their looks. Now I think this is so intelligent because there are obviously queens that are at very different levels of drag, some that are newer queens into the franchises and some of them that are really old school. On top of it, certain countries have more opportunity for drag, therefore can make more money off of drag. And then there's also some Western countries that are just more well off in general that can spend more on their drag. So I feel like this evens out the playing field somewhat. Obviously there are gonna be some queens that are gonna go up and above that budget and there's nothing you can do to stop that but at least giving a good chunk of money makes it fair for everyone on top of it some of these queens that are a little bit more local 
are generally more crafty and they have been being able to pull out looks with a lot less money. So I think that with $20,000, they're going to be able to make that stretch and going to make that really, really great. One thing that does concern me is that drag race across the seasons is at very different levels. If you see a drag race Italia season one versus a US season, it's like night and day difference. Same thing goes for like Belgique versus Canada. So it is going to be super interesting to see all these queens come in from different parts of the world, uh, bringing their own aesthetic to the competition. So with so many international queens, you're probably wondering what language will global all-stars be in? And the answer is English. RuPaul will be the judge and it is said that judges from other franchises will come in as guest judges. Now, it is also said that there's going to be 12 episodes on the season, six of which are going to be non-elimination. We're unsure if these six non-eliminations are going to be all at the beginning or if they're going to be sprinkled in. My best guess is that they're going to be sprinkled in to keep the drama going and keep it alive. Personally, I hope that they do a split premiere and they do half the queens on the first episode, half the queens on the second episode, both of them non-elimination. Maybe we see a double chante in one of the episodes and maybe we have like one non-eliminated episode. Something like that. Or maybe throw in a twist like a save a queen. Let's just make it interesting. I do like that there is going to be some non-eliminations because it means that the queens are going to be able to stay on the season longer. And if the queens are able to stay on the season longer, they are going to get more and more exposure and therefore can help out their careers. Especially if you're from one of these smaller countries, you really need this show. If you spend all that money and get kicked out early, it's just like you kind of wonder why, you know what I mean? So that's all I have for you in terms of drag tea and drama. But now let's get into the good part. Let's talk about the cast. First up from Drag Race Svedia. Girl, I probably butchered that. From Drag Race Sweden, we have Miss Vanity Vane. Vanity on her original season had one maxi challenge wins and zero mini challenge wins. She was in the bottom two times and was eliminated on episode eight, meaning that she came in third place overall. Now, I'm not surprised to see Vanity on this list. I did think that they were gonna go with Fontana instead of Vanity because Fontana was much more loved on the season, but I do like that Vanity is on it because I do feel like she's a better representation for Sweden as Fontana is a little bit more of a Brazilian bombshell, but I do hope to see Fontana on a future season. Now, personally, I would have loved to see Santana Sex Machine because I just love her aesthetic and vibe, but she didn't make the top placement and it was a very small franchise. So I think Vanity Vane is a good choice. Vanity had a little bit of everything going on for her. She was a pretty all around good competitor. The problem with Sweden in general was that competition was very unfair. We had some really polished queens with some like basic newbie queens. And it just goes to show that the, that Sweden is very small and just didn't have a lot of talent. Vanity is probably one of those queens that does represent Swedish drag well and has been in the game for a few years. So is a good choice to come back. Unfortunately, she ha Vanity had no chance of winning on her original season because Amira Thunderpussy was just like next level and was running away from it. She was basically the Envy Peru of her season. So... I'm glad to see Sweden on this list because the show has been canceled. So maybe they're hoping that by having some representation on the All-Stars edition that it can get picked up again and give some new momentum and joy to that season. All in all, I do think that Vanity Vane has a little bit of an uphill battle against her because there are some very powerful queens on this season, but I have no doubt after a year of experience, making some friends, and maybe if she gets a little few pointers from Admira, I think she can definitely turn it up. Next from Drag Race Germany, it's Tessa Testicle. Now Tessa, her original season had zero maxi challenge wins, one mini challenge win, and was in the bottom four times, and she came in eighth place. Now, looking at the cast of season, which I will go through, she has the lowest placement of all the queens that are gonna be on this cast. So Tessa definitely has her work cut out for her. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this is that Tessa barely had any time to work in these seasons because from airing her original season to going on to the next season was a very short time period. In fact, it people believe that the reason why Tessa was chosen versus some of the higher queens was because they needed some of the higher queens 
to be still active on social media and engaging with the show to get it a little bit more hype. And this was like literally in the middle of airing. Now I watch a lot of Drag Race, I promise you, but I do not watch all the seasons. And this is why I really enjoy a show like this because even me who is like a Drag Race connoisseur is going to get to meet a lot of new queens. I did not watch Drag Race Germany. That being said, I have worked with Pandora Knox in the past. Um, and so I was rooting for her on all of her socials and things like that. But I will tell you that Tessa is definitely well connected in the drag community. A lot of people in Holland were rooting for her, were putting up her pictures on social media. So good on her. All in all, I'm very excited to be introduced to this queen and I'm excited to see what she has to offer. Next up from Drag Race France season one, it's So With The Muse. So The Muse on her original season had two maxi challenge wins and one mini challenge win. She was in the bottom two times and eventually came second slash third place. So she went all the way to the end. Now Drag Race France season one was arguably the best first season of Drag Race I have ever seen. Whenever you start a new franchise of Drag Race, the first season is always a little bit like touch and go. There's always something that goes wrong, whether it's some weird judging, whether it's some favoritism, production issues, you know, there's always something a little bit weird. Uh, but Drag Race France was really great. And so The Muse was definitely a standout on her season. I personally like to say that she is the taste of France, as in taste from like Drag Race UK season two. She is so cool, so good. And I really love to see her on this international franchise. Now the show is in English and it is notorious that French people do not speak the best English. We saw this a little bit with Nikki Doll and I will say that Nikki's Doll's English was actually really good. But from a French speaker myself, I can tell you that um, it is very hit and miss and most people don't sound like me. Uh, this is very different from like a country like Sweden or Holland where their English is freaking excellent. So I will say that So The Muse will probably have some difficulty with some of the challenges. It will definitely have some difficulty with some of like the improv and acting challenges. I actually wonder how they will do those challenges in an all-stars format knowing that several of the Queen's English is not necessarily a very big strong suit of theirs. But we'll see, obviously they've been cast for a reason. Obviously they have to have some sort of level of English. And you know what, uh, just because you don't speak English doesn't mean that you can't be an excellent drag queen. And if we're looking for a global superstar, then why do they have to be English speaking? I'm just saying. But enough about my ranting, let's get back to So The Muse. Honestly, I think So The Muse is gonna be an excellent choice for this cast and I'm super, super excited to see her on. Obviously, you know, with La Grande Dame on UK vs. The World, uh, who also came second and third, this was the obvious choice of who to go with. So let's see what she ends up bringing us. Next up, from Canada's Drag Race season two, we have Pythia. Pythia on her original season had two maxi challenge wins, zero mini challenge wins, and zero times at the bottom. She made it all the way to the finale, coming in second slash third place. Personally, I think she came in second place, losing to Isis Couture. Now, I will say that Pythia was the looks queen of the season. She was definitely giving Isis a run for her money. She had iconic looks that really put Canada's Drag Race back on the map. Uh, Pythia gave us all of the all of those shock moments on the runway and was giving us things like we had never seen before. On top of it, recently on Canada's Drag Race season four, we saw Denim compete and Denim is a drag daughter slash sister of Pythia. And you can definitely see that kooky side in her family. And Denim also had iconic runways. And Denim has said that Pythia helped her with most of her runways. So if Denim's recent looks and Pythia's original looks have anything to show, we are gonna get some moments from Pythia. Now Pythia's downfall was her lip sync abilities. She made it all the way to the end without hitting the bottom. So we never really saw what she had to offer. When it came to the finale, it was clear that Isis won. So hopefully uh, Miss Pythia has come back, taken a dance lesson or two, and is ready to bring it to the competition because she had everything else going for her except for that final lip sync. All in all, I am super, super excited to see Pythia. I am glad she's getting an international audience. I personally think she can be the next Jimbo. Um, obviously very different aesthetic, very different personality, but I feel like the world will fall in love with Pythia. Next up from Drag Race Italia, season two, it's Nelelia. 
Now, I am super excited to see this queen on the show because this is the first time we are gonna get an Italian queen on an international global franchise. There was no Italian queens on UK vs. The World 1, there was no Italian queens on UK vs. The World 2, and there was no Italian queens on Canada vs. The World 1 either. So I am glad we are finally getting Italy to be represented on the global stage. Now, Nelenia on her original season had one maxi challenge wins and three mini challenge wins. She was in the bottom a total of zero times and made it to second slash third place. So we are starting to see a trend here. Second, third place queens coming back and fighting for the crown. Overall, I think this is a strong competitor to come back. Italy is like France and is gonna have a trouble with the language barrier. These are not countries that have English relatively like natively fluent inside their, their, their realm. And I think that that's probably why we haven't seen Italy come onto the franchise till now. Uh, she is a season two queen and we all know that season one was a mess and I don't know how many of them actually speak English that well. Nelenia was also the midst congeniality from her season. She's definitely gonna be bringing that Italian charm to the season. All in all, I'm quite excited what she has to bring and I'm excited that Italy is gonna get introduced globally, finally. Next up from Drag Race Brazil season one is Miranda Lebrao. Miranda on her original season had one maxi challenge win and two mini challenge wins. She was in the bottom one time, but ended up making it all the way to the finale, coming in second, third slash fourth place. Because we don't know who actually uh, won. Now Brazil was a little bit of a questionable season. I actually stopped watching it after like one or two episodes because it was a little bit like, too much for me. Personally, I think it was all over the place. It definitely had season one problems. And with the translations and everything that was going on, it was just not for me. I'm excited to see that uh, Brazil is gonna be represented on this international franchise so I can actually get to know this queen. So if you're from Brazil or you're a big fan of Drag Race Brazil, let me know your comments down below. Do you think this is a good casting or not? I'd love to know a little bit more about her. Was she the right choice or should it have been somebody else? I'd love to know your thoughts. Next up from Drag Race Down Under season two, it's Queen Kong. So Queen Kong on her original season had two maxi challenge wins and one mini challenge win. She was in the bottom two times, but ended up making it all the way to the finale, coming in second slash third place. Now Queen Kong is definitely the lip sync assassin of this season. She was doing dancer, like professional dancer level dance moves. So all of these drag queens have their work cut out for them, especially the ones who are notoriously not the best. What I do love about Queen Kong is Queen Kong is Samoan, and so she's bringing, not only is she bringing Down Under, but she's bringing Samoan culture to Drag Race, but also she is a political queen, uh, she's an activist, um, and so I do think that not only will the show give a light on Drag Race Down Under, but it will also give a light to all the causes that she's very involved in. And from watching Drag Race Down Under season two and Bring Back My Girls, it seems that Queen Kong is definitely that more of that motherly figure in the Down Under drag scene. All in all, great casting all around. Super excited to see her back. And if you're wondering why Queen Kong and not somebody else, remember this was filming before season three of Down Under even aired. So obviously they weren't gonna like throw in one of those queens just yet. They don't know how the audience is gonna react to them. All in all, I think Queen Kong is an excellent casting choice and I'm super excited to see her back on my television screen. Next up from Drag Race UK season three, it is Kitty Scott Claus. Kitty Scott Claus on her original season had two maxi challenge wins, zero mini challenge wins, and was in the bottom zero times. She also came in second slash third place. Now, anybody who watched Drag Race UK can definitely say that Drag Race UK season three was a mess of a season. UK is generally one of my favorite franchises because I do like how gritty and raw and real some of those queens get, um, as well as the fashions being really elevated. And I did used to live in London, so I definitely have an affinity for those queens. But season three was a little bit of a mess. And the reason why that was a little bit of a mess is that apparently they had a shorter time to film that season because they were filming UK vs. The World season one right after it. And it definitely felt rushed and it definitely felt some of the challenges felt phoned in and it was a little bit too much. And it's for those reasons I'm so glad that Kitty Scott Claus is on here because um, 
On the second half of her season, she was really coming into her own and really giving Crystal a run for her money. I actually was a little bit surprised when Crystal won, not because Crystal is not, Crystal was an excellent queen, but Crystal had a lot of her wins at the beginning and near the end, it felt like Crystal was fading out and Kitty Scott Claus was really coming for her. Um, and Kitty Scott Claus has got the personality, that charisma. She's definitely gonna be the confessional queen. She's also a native English speaker, so she's got a lot of stuff working for her. I'm quite curious how Kitty is gonna react with all the international flavors. If there's any sort of alliances on this show, she might get derailed because Kitty Scott Claus doesn't seem to me to be that queen that will backstab somebody. All in all, I'm super excited to see her back. I think season three definitely needs a redemption and she's definitely here to represent. From Drag Race Mexico season one, we have Galvaro. An original season had one maxi challenge win, zero mini challenge wins, and was in the bottom two times. Ultimately, she made it all the way to the finale, coming in second slash third place. Now, Galvaro is not a stranger to uh, to drag and drag competitions because she also uh, competed in Las Mas Draga, which is the original Mexican drag show. If anybody is a Drag Race Mexico fan, you should definitely go check out Las Mas Draga. So Drag Race Mexico is also one of those franchises I did not watch. Uh, so I can't really give my full opinion on this queen, but I am excited to see Mexican drag represented. Mexican drag as a whole is a beast in itself. I honestly think that they are some of the most creative queens I've ever seen. Like even on Las Mas Dragas, you can see them create their own looks. It's just like really next, next level. So personally, I did not watch uh, Drag Race Mexico. And the reason I didn't watch Drag Race Mexico was because I couldn't stand Valentina. I love Valentina as a queen, don't get me wrong, but her Spanish was not very good. So it was a little bit cringe for me to watch it. Also as a non-native, uh, Spanish speaker like I do speak some Spanish but I need you to speak like perfectly clear Spanish and uh, Valentina I was having problems with for those reasons I didn't get into Drag Race Mexico now that being said I am super excited to see Drag Race Mexico on this cast list because I do think that the Mexican drag has some of the most creative queens I have ever seen if you watch Las Mastraga then you would know exactly what I'm talking about some creative creative designers some awesome looks overall and this is one of the franchises that will make a budget stretch twenty thousand dollars for them girl they're gonna turn it up like like no one can believe i am so excited to see what's what's gonna happen here um all in all i'm excited to be introduced to a new queen i'm excited to be introduced to a new franchise and let's see what happens Next up from Drag Race Philippines season one is Eva Laqueen. Eva Laqueen on her original season had zero maxi challenge wins and two mini challenge wins. She was in the bottom one time and eventually came in third slash fourth place. Now, I will say that uh, I did not watch Drag Race Philippines either, but I will say that uh, the Drag Race Philippines fans are some of the craziest, maybe some will say the best. They definitely love their queens and they're gonna show her support on it. For example, Marina Summers is now on UK vs. The World 2, and she's got the most likes on all of our photos. And honestly, uh, on that video that I posted on UK vs. The World, I have so many Filipino fans. Um, so I am definitely gonna be watching Drag Race Philippines before this season airs, because I wanna get all caught up and see what all the fuss is about, because everybody's telling me that that season is super good. Um, so I have nothing to say yet, but I will by the time the season airs. Next up from Drag Race Belgique is Athena Sornlekis. Athena on her original season had two maxi challenge wins, zero mini challenge wins, and was in the bottom one time. She eventually came in second place, losing to Drag Queen. Honestly, Athena was the only queen really giving Drag Queen a run for her money. It was really neck and neck between them all season. Everybody else was just not as strong and not as polished as these two were. Um, so this was 100% the obvious choice to be on the show. Um, I do like that Drag Race Belgique is getting an audience because if you actually follow any of the Drag Race franchises, Belgique is the least loved out of them all. If you go on that show, you maybe get 20,000 followers, while some other franchises you get 200,000 followers. So they need the exposure more than anything. I hope that Athena being on this show will give more of a spotlight to Drag Race Belgique, and I hope she does well enough and sticks around because she probably needs it the most. 
Now, she is a pretty good all-around competitor. I have no idea how her level of English is, but I'm sure she would make it work. I've heard that several of the queens on this franchise actually went to go take English lessons before coming on this show to polish up and make sure that they can compete. And I think that if she's one of those, that was freaking intelligent. All in all, I'm super excited to see Athena, and I think that with the budget that they gave them, she will definitely be a good competitor. The question is, can she stick around long enough to compete? She definitely has the chops, but there is some stiff competition in this season. And last, but definitely not least, from the US of A, it's Miss Alyssa Edwards. Now, Alyssa Edwards is an OG original drag race queen, having competed not once, but twice. On her original season, she originally competed in season five where she came in sixth place, but then came back for All Stars 2 and came in fifth place. Despite not placing in the top four, she is the most iconic queen in the world. Uh, she's got some of the most biggest catch. She's definitely top tier level drag. And honestly, people are gonna say that it is unfair that she is on this season. She's definitely been a booked and blessed queen for many, many years. She also has a lot of experience on the show. She's friends with World of Wonder. She is very much that queen, that bitch. People will say that it is unfair that she's on the show and I get why they might think that. You have to think of it from a production point of view. They are only bringing in one US queen and since they're only bringing in one US queen, they need to make that I queen so iconic, so memorable, so loved that even if you have not seen any of the international franchises, you will want to tune in for this one. Alyssa Edwards is that queen. She is definitely going to be carrying the season. I don't see her going anytime early. And I think that whoever gets rid of her on the season is going to get a lot of hate. If she does, I'm okay with that. It might be rigged in her favor, but personally, I'm just excited to see international queens get spotlighted alongside her as her equal because already that is a feat in itself. All in all, Alyssa Edwards is Alyssa Edwards, and if you don't know who Alyssa Edwards is, go back and watch her season, and I would tell you to immediately go back and watch both season five and All Stars 2 because they were both incredible, and they still hold up to this day, in my opinion. So that is it for the cast. So if you've been counting, that is 12 queens from 12 different franchises. But you will also probably notice that there's three franchises that got completely snubbed and they are Drag Race Spain, Drag Race Thailand, and Drag Race Holland. Now, Drag Race Spain is said to have not been represented here because they are getting their own All-Stars version. I do think that this is a little bit of a cop-out because we are getting Arancha de la Mancha on UK versus the World Season 2, so why not have a Spanish queen on here? Personally, I would have really loved to see someone like Killer Queen on this season, that she would have been fantastic. Now, Drag Race Holland uh, is said to not be on the show because the show, uh, because Drag Race Holland is canceled. Again, I think that's a little bit of a cop-out because Drag Race Sweden is also canceled, but they are represented. On top of it, Drag Race Holland had some iconic queens, and we also have Kate Minaj on UK vs. The World too. so I don't think that there's anything true to the rumors. Personally, I would have loved to have seen Chelsea Boy on this cast. I've said it several times, she's one of my favorite queens from all the franchises, and she's definitely slept on. For Drag Race Thailand, Rumor is that Candy Zainite was on the show, was cast for the show, and they were going to include her as a 13th queen. But the fans went crazy when they heard about Global All-Stars, started DMing her. She spilled the beans a little bit uh, on what was happening. She was evading questions and, and accidentally said something she probably shouldn't have and was cut from the show. Now, I don't know if this is true or not true. If it is, that would be so horrible. And it just goes to show that sometimes the fans, you guys, we just got to calm down. Do not go with DMing people. Just enjoy the show for the show. Support them on Instagram um, and do their thing. I do hope that if they do have a Global All-Stars 3, that these franchises do get represented the next time around because it just seems unfair that every other franchise it was except for these three. Why couldn't we have 15 queens? You know what I mean? But let's see how the show performs. Let's see how it goes. And maybe we'll get a season two. Y'all, that is it for me for today. Do you agree or disagree with my comments? Did you enjoy this episode? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.